Veterans Corner. I'm your host, State Senator Kevin Wickos. I'm very proud and pleased to be here in the home of United States Marine Corps Corporal Bill Gemignani, who served in World War II. Bill, congratulations mm -hmm. on being January's Veteran of the Month. Mm -hmm. It's a pleasure to be here, and I want to. You served in a very special capacity. That uh, there's actually a monument built, um, and you, I think, are our first veteran that was ever that we honored served in Iwo Jima. Mm -hmm. And so if you could just tell us a little bit about uh, when, how you started to, your military career. Now you wanted to volunteer to join the military, correct? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, how old were you when you did that? Uh, 18 years old. Okay, you went down to the recruiting office? The recruiting office, yeah. I, I did the first, uh, the, the month before that, okay, and uh, then they didn't take me because I was 17, and and uh, and so then I was I was uh, uh, drafted, okay, okay, and uh, and they took me and they and and they allowed me to pick whatever uh, organization that I wanted to join, so. Uh, but I wanted to be in, in the Marine Corps. Is there a reason why? Did you have any other family members that, or friends that were in the military? Why did you choose the Marines? Um, <clears throat> Do you just thought that that was, the, that was the place to be? Yeah, I wanted to be a Good Marine. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and so how long did you have before you had to ship out for your um, uh, training? Gee, that's that's quite a few years ago. Yeah, so yeah. you didn't have much time, I think. You went yeah. now. Where were you? you went, Paris Island? Is that where the Paris? Oh yes, uh, Paris, Paris Island. Island. Yes, yeah. And this is during the height of World War Two. This is the height of war. Yes, and World War Two. Did you get to pick what you wanted to do in the Marines, or were you assigned a a job? Oh, uh, well, I was in the Fifth Marine Division, mm -hmm. and. Uh, <clears throat> And when I was in boot camp in Paris Island, uh, and the last last two weeks, we uh, we were taken up to uh, to fire and uh, guns, you know, at the range. Uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, <clears throat> and I came out. With uh, with a uh, with a high score, and uh, and I was the second highest uh, marine in terms of uh, of uh, marksmanship. Sounds ma like yeah. marksmanship, right? And uh, there's a picture of it. Uh, you got some. You got we'll some take pictures. a picture of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I I uh, I did very very well on that. So when you guys landed in Iwo Jima, was it a, was it nighttime or early morning? Oh, it was it was in the, it was uh, we were we were behind uh, <clears throat> we, we were all on boats. Yep. Yeah. They blasted Iwo Jima for three days. The American front lines had advanced to Guam and Saipan. Ahead now stood Iwo Jima, the most heavily fortified island in the world. Buried deep underground lay 20 years of Jap preparation for murder. 20,000 of their toughest fighting men waited for us to make the first move. And they don't have to wait long. The Navy begins to soften up the island so we can land. And 
we were in in boats ready to jump into smaller boats okay. and, and and take us into into uh, Iwo Jima. D-Day, beginning of the toughest 26 days in Marine Corps history. We watch the central control vessel. When this flag drops, our landing craft will head for the beach. advance on 3,000 yards of beach. Iwo Jima, everything was all underground. They did, they did a, the Japanese did a, a terrific job and, and digging in and, and, and uh, uh, doing all that kind of stuff, you know. Like, yeah. what, like what kind of stuff was underground? Huh? Like oh, it was all, all sand. It was uh, black sand. Mm -hmm. What did they store under there, underground? Uh, underground well, they had their, their weapons and they had tunnels that went from one to the other. And, and, uh, <clears throat> and the Marines had to... Uh, <clears throat> Use of uh, use flame to uh, uh, burn those burn those places out. Mm. You know. Did you have to go, ever have to go into a tunnel? No, we, uh, I never went to the t tunnel. I, we stayed outside the tunnel. Yeah. And, yeah. and they blasted it. And, of course, the, uh, the, the Navy blasted it uh, before we went in, too. They, they tried to hit all those places. Uh, actually, uh, what, we, what we did was we got in, and, uh, and, uh, and at night, mm -hmm. you, you know, you dug a hole and you got in. And a couple of guys would, uh, uh, we would, we would stay in the hole, you know. And sure. and not only that, I was in. Uh, uh, we built up uh, a supply of of, uh, of uh, ammunition, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and we were there to protect it, you know. So we built our. We built our uh, holes, you know, and stayed there. And and uh, and then one night, one night, uh, a group of Japanese came out of their holes and came after us to get at the. Uh, but we did, we took care of that. And we, yeah. yeah. The Japanese wanted to come and steal the the U.S. ammunition. Oh or yeah, they wanted to or... get rid of it and blow it sure. out or do do whatever. So you know, yeah. At that point, yeah. Was it? Did you have like a? Did you make your own base there? Was it tents or um, did you? No, occupy we, some no, of the Japanese it was in a hole. It, it was, it it was in a hole, yeah. Because we had a we had clothes to, to protect us. You know? mm -hmm. It was, uh, um, it was warm there anyway. You know that kind of thing. It was about it was uh, seven hundred uh, miles away from Jap Japan. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it was uh, seven and a half uh, miles. They had one one mountain. You know, one of the things I saw that you said in your bio that um, did, did the Japanese come up and explode something, and you had a little hearing loss. 
Oh yeah, there was. Uh, oh yeah, there was a lot of noise. Uh, uh, you know. And was it constant? Oh well, yeah. Uh, they set they set off the uh, the. the um, I, I was just talking to you about um, uh, ammunition. Right. You know. And they they wanted to come out and and uh, blow the place up, you know, and uh, and we we almost got, you know, uh, we we almost got hurt. Uh, then they had the flag, they, uh, they had a small flag, and uh, and what they they brought they brought a big flag in there and with with the six guys. On yeah. There. The Marines advance. The Japanese defenders of Iwo were select, specially chosen men, fighting with their army's newest weapons and every advantage of terrain in their favor. Their fortress caves, saturating the island, are wiped out by high explosives. Iwo Jima is conquered. Only isolated snipers remain. Its airstrips are already in use by American super fortresses. Atop Mount Suribachi, this flag is 625 miles from Tokyo. On Iwo Jima, there were 100 uh, Marines from Connecticut that were killed. Really? Did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah. Do you know how many Marines actually went there from Connecticut? Um, I, I don't know. I, I really yeah. don't know. I, there, there were a lot of them, you know. But uh, 99 were killed, uh, Connecticut uh, Marines. I, on I, Iwo Jima. Yeah, I read that the Battle of Iwo Jima was one of the, the costliest and deadliest battles in World War II. Oh yeah. yeah, on both sides. The number. Well, of, you, uh, how, you know how many thousands? Of, oh, it was tens of thousands, right? Oh, there was uh, seven seven thousand uh, uh, Marines were killed. Oh. On, uh, can you imagine that, huh? <laughs> While we fought, we prayed. Wreckage along the beach was only a small part of the cost of 26 days of fighting. the helmets of our dead in neat piles. Helmets of 4,000 men who died to take a tiny island somewhere in the Pacific. One of the, th one of the reasons why we do this tape is so uh, folks can hear from people that were actually living the things that they read about in history books. Yeah. You know, because nowadays kids will read about World War II and they'll read about uh, the, the battle at Iwo Jima. Yeah. And they don't know anything. So anything that you share with them is something that they know firsthand what it was like. Now they'll know about, yeah. about you coming oh, yeah. over on a naval ship mm -hmm. and that it was bombed by the Navy. Uh, uh, let me tell you a story. Yeah. Uh, we got on the we got on the uh, we got on a, uh, a boat and 
and we had instead of eating uh, K rations and C rations, which which was all that we had, you know, we had, we had a cooked meal, you know, and uh, so that uh, so we got an Easter Easter meal, and that night. Everybody, including the uh, everybody, including all uh, all the Marines and the sailors and everything else, got sick. <laughs> they were puking out in the out in the ocean and everything, you know, all Your over. Their stomachs were used yeah. to it. Oh, jeez, it was terrible. <laughs> well, you know what? That was a good reason to get sick over, I guess. Huh? That was a good. It was an okay reason to get sick over. You're kind of on your way back home, and you're having oh, a yeah. nice. Uh, but the Navy Sunday guys meal. got got uh, got sick too. Was and it rough even waters? even even the, uh, the the chief, the 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 you know the the, the master, master yeah, you know, yeah. he got sick too. <laughs> oh, I don't know. And have you ever gone back to Japan or Iwo no. Jima? Oh, uh, we uh, we. Uh, when we left, when we left uh, uh, Iwo Jima, mm -hmm. and then we went, uh, and that's when they dropped the atomic bombs, the two atomic bombs in in Japan, and then they gave up at that point. Okay. So we went, in, then we went in, as as uh, you know, and but it was all different at that time. Well, I'm sure because of Jap, Jap, I got pictures and everything else of all that stuff. You know. I'm sure that somebody who, where did you grow up? Hmm? Where did you grow up? Where did I grow? Yeah, it was in Torrington. I remember you were born in Torrington. I was born up? in Torrington, and uh, and uh, but um, uh, in uh, in Wethersfield. Okay, so yeah. Wethersfield, somewhat of a city. Yeah, and I can only imagine somebody that, like yourself that went from Iwo Jima over to Japan to see what happened, the aftermath of the atomic bomb. It oh, must yeah. have just looked like rubble. Oh, oh, it was terrible. At 10.58, the morning of August 9th, the bomb was exploded above the city, and in the towering mushroom, Japan could read its doom. This was more than a routine bombing. It was the funeral pyre of an aggressor nation. From the air, the skeletons of the Mitsubishi plants made evident that Nagasaki's war-making power was totally destroyed. For the valley area of little more than three square miles, blast and fire reduced the industrial plants and surrounding buildings to blackened rubble. The Mitsubishi Steel and Arms works extended almost a mile in length. Before the blast, these were modern buildings constructed like our own American factories. Closer examination of the ruins shows the same complete destruction that characterized the ruins of Hiroshima. Damage to equipment and machinery used in the manufacture of naval rifles, AA guns, and heavy artillery was such that even if Japan had determined to commit suicide by continuing resistance, she could not have salvaged much from the ruins. Smokestacks bent but did not break before the blast and roads were unaffected, people using them without ill effect shortly after the explosion. The ruins revealed beyond doubt the existence of the shadow factories the Japanese had set up in the nearby residential areas of the industrial valley. You have seen the swath of destruction created by atomic power in this tale of two cities. The world's greatest minds in science, statecraft, and military matters are wrestling with the problems created by the atom. On this spot, outlined in stone, is a figure representing the average man, regardless of his race or creed. These atomic footprints on the sands of time can never be erased. They point a path which leads to unparalleled progress or unparalleled destruction. Just as in the darkness of the desert morning, when the atomic age was born, atomic power puts the question squarely to mankind. One of the things that we like to do is we always give our veteran the opportunity to pass on a message to people that are either currently serving mm -hmm. or somebody that might think about serving. They're maybe in high school and they want to join the military mm -hmm. when they get out of high school or they just feel like maybe they have a calling to join the military. 
And so I want to give you that opportunity to say what, what's on your mind and a, a message to other veterans or, or would-be veterans coming up. Gee, uh, geez, I don't know what to say. Uh, what to say. Do, you, do you regret ever serving in the military? No, no, See? no, no, we go. no, no. Um, from, from what you went through, what you saw, I think some just saying no, that you don't regret it, is sometimes saying a lot. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, the, I was lucky. Because people like yourselves yeah. and, and your, your fellow officers that weren't able to come home, it's for actions like that you guys did is allow us to do what we do today. Yeah. Because we wouldn't be able to, I don't think, live the way we live today. The summer issue is the last issue. Uh, we, we get this uh, every month. And... Uh, and they just, and of course, there's hardly any any um, Marines around anymore, you know. Yeah. So. Thank you. So, on behalf of the, the yeah. folks yeah. Of, in Connecticut, I, I want to personally thank you oh, okay. for your service yeah. and for agreeing to meet with me today and talk yeah. about your experiences oh, in yeah. Jima. Yeah. Well, I didn't. I didn't do a good job, though. Well, in my book, you got an A+. Plus. Huh? If I was the teacher, you'd get an A+. Plus. Is that right? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is State Senator Kevin Wickos. I'm here with, today with United States Marine Corp Corporal Bill Gimignani. Yeah. Thank you. We'll see you next month on Veterans Corner. <laughs> oh, yeah.